Amen. Are you excited? Amen. Are you excited to be in the presence of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Stand on your feet as we read from the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 22. Book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 22. I've gone through a series on Gideon, I think, last year. We started with that during the pandemic. Um, and the Lord took me back there yesterday, and I think we need to revisit that. Amen? Amen. We need to revisit that once we're done with this message. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to do an injustice to the topic of depression, and that's why we are just trying to deal with it. Bear with us. Amen? Amen. Uh, the word gets quite extended in this house. Judges chapter 6, verse 22, Bible says, And when Gideon saw that he was the angel of Jehovah, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, because I have seen the angel of Jehovah face to face. And Jehovah said to him, Peace to you. Everybody say, Peace. Do not fear. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to Jehovah and called it Jehovah Shalom. Everybody said Jehovah Shalom. It is yet in opera of the Abyssalites to this day. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. You may be seated this morning. Amen. We're dealing with a subject today, Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. We, we use that term so loosely in the church circle, Shalom of God and Shalom to you, but today we're going to dig a little bit deeper into it, and I hope and pray that I will be able to do justice to it, because I'm trying to condense quite a bit of things that the Lord has laid on my heart. Amen. Amen. This will be the fourth message on depression, and if you're just joining us online as well, then you are intrigued by the series of depression. We have administered three other messages that you can look in our channel or on our Facebook page. And today I will be dealing with the peace. I think one of the things that is attacked the most when we go through depression is the peace. The peace starts to miss. I mean, you become restless into things and you don't find peace in doing anything. Are you with me? When we talk about peace, it is a, strand, it is a standard greeting in a lot of Eastern cultures, I would say. The culture that I grew up, we have the word called Salam. Salam literally means shalom, peace. Amen? In the West, we have hello, hi, good morning, good afternoon. But for us, shalom was the greeting. Salam means peace be on you. Every time you meet somebody, you say salam. We have our Muslim brothers, they add Allah's peace by saying assalamu alaikum. So they say Allah's peace be on you. Are you with me? So, but, but shalom literally means peace. And it is, it is in a lot of Eastern cultures, even up until now, uh, it, it, it still exists in there. And it started in 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 6. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture because we're studying a subject. And it says in 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 6, And you shall say this, Long life and peace be to you, and peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. What a powerful word. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 6. He speaks of threefold peace. Long life and peace be to you. And peace to your house and peace to all that you have. Amen. Amen. So when he says peace to your house, he speaks of your children, that there is peace in the lives of your children. There is peace in your marriage. And when he speaks of the peace that all you have, it means your possession, your work, in peace in all your totality, that was the promise. That was what God envisioned for his people. Dictionary defines peace as a sense of tranquility, harmony, or security. That's how the dictionary defines peace. In the Old Testament, as we read, Shalom was the word used for peace. And in the New Testament, we find another word used for peace, 
which is a Greek word, Old Testament is Hebrew shalom, and the Greek word is irene. Irene means peace as well. It, it speaks of the rest in the Greek. So these two words used for this throughout the scriptures, and there are hundreds of references in relating to peace. Amen. Now, I believe that peace is not guaranteed with human competence. You cannot try to achieve peace with your intellect or wisdom or understanding. And we will learn that why it becomes so difficult that you can have cycles of peace and then the peace is gone. We're going to dig deeper into the root causes of that because it's literally impossible to achieve peace with your own competence. It can't be. And neither it comes from being super spiritual where you totally ignore what's happening around you. Are you with me? There are people that feel that they have the peace of God and then they just turn a blind eye to all their problems because now they feel that they got the peace of God. Now the peace of God does not, does not allow you to just forsake everything of life. Then you like the Buddhists or the Hindus. Why? Because when they want to find the ultimate peace, they see no evil, they speak no evil, and they hear no evil. They are locked up in the monasteries, mon and they are these shrines, and they dedicate their lives, and they go into this deep meditation. Because that's the only way they can achieve peace when they totally abandon the life itself. Are you with me? A lot of people in the West go to these places to find peace, and they come back. And they come back and now they must live certain kind, they must adopt a certain kind of habits to achieve that kind of peace. So they will go to yoga, they will have meditations, they, will, they must have certain kind of habits, they must change their diet because apparently even the food can upset your peace. So there's a very corrupted idea of how to gain peace. And a lot of these religions, they don't know how to, you know, handle that. And they tell you, like, well, if you want to find the peace, then become super spiritual. Abandon your families. Abandon the life itself. And then only you can find peace. Otherwise, there's no peace in this world. Are you with me? Amen. And I've seen people in the West. Even when during our travel, I've seen people, you know, changing their whole clothing and putting big dots. And now because they're trying to find peace in their lives. And even the clothing must change, you know, for them, for them to have that kind of, you know, excitement about their lives. And they become more miserable. They just leave one cycle of misery to another cycle of spiritualism. Are you with me? They abandon one world and they go to another world. <laughs> trying to find the peace, but peace is not there. Biblical concept of peace is not where we abandon the life itself. In fact, Bible says in John 10.10 10, that God came. Jesus came to give life, and life in abundance. So we are promised life in abundance and life eternal. Life eternal, we are promised when you close your eyes and you have a life after you did. You did. But life abundance speaks of the life now. Amen. It means that I can have the peace of God without me abandoning my family, without me abandoning my friends or my life. God has promised us to have peace in this life. And that's what he said in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Long life to you. You're trying to run away from this life that is troubling you and full of struggle and challenges. But God says, I give you long life and peace over that long life. Amen. And peace in your houses. And peace to all that you have. That is the biblical concept of peace. Where you don't have to abandon things to search for peace or find peace. Where you can have peace and live life to the fullest in this world. 
That's what brings Christianity totally, it gives a different perspective into life. Where I don't have to perform Hajj or Umrah every year for me to find a dosage of peace that I need. While I struggle in my life. Or make these pilgrimages because I must save up money. And I'm struggling in my life and I need to find peace. And go to the holy site for me to find peace. Peace is where God is. And he is everywhere. Hallelujah. And we are the temple. And if he is in us, we are the temple of peace. That's why when Baal speaks of peace, he says, peace to your long life, to you, to your houses, and to everything that you have, your whole world must ooze out peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Amen. So you don't need to abandon the life to find peace. What a, what a privilege it is. To know that, that I don't, don't need to just cut myself off from people. And I know we have a lot of new age kind of things happening in the church where we need to cut off from people to find peace. No, you can still have miserable people, complainers around you, and still have the peace of God. You don't need to cut yourself from, from, from families and friends and abandon yourself and build walls around you and be a lonely ranger in your own small world. No, you can have all of them because your peace is not dependent on your earthly relationships. Your peace is not dependent on how they treat you or how you treat them. Your peace depends on whom you serve, on who dwells inside of you. And if he is God over your life, and if he calls himself Jehovah Shalom, you can have the peace of God in the midst of adversaries and challenges and troubles and in sickness. Because your peace is not dependent by the surroundings. Amen. Your peace is not dependent on the abandonment and cutting off. Hallelujah. We don't believe such things. We don't believe such things. The, the, the word of God does not teach us to cut off people. The word of God teaches us to love our enemies. Your peace must not be dependent on people. We don't serve a foreign God. We serve a God who calls himself the God of peace. Amen. We serve Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. So we, we don't have to find coping mechanism without stress in order for us to have peace. We don't need to change our diets for the sake of peace. Vegetables are not going to make you more peaceful. Because there's a whole thing going on. Because you eat animals and all of that. That's why there's no peace in your life. Eat. You will find peace with your steak and your chicken and your roast. Enjoy. Hallelujah. A peace is not dependent on the dressing and... And on the, my God, even on the economy, we, as a country, we are in a mess. I don't know how we're coping, but we are in a mess. We can still live in peace, even though there's so much happening around us because our peace is not dependent on the things around. Our peace is within us, and that is Christ within us, the hope of glory. Amen. Are you with me? So you don't need to develop certain habits to find peace. Hallelujah. Your peace must be focused on one person and that is Christ himself. I believe this is my definition of peace. Peace is the fruit of being confident in God's serenity. And I speak of God's serenity so strong in this house. Where God is sovereign over our lives. It means God rule and reigns. Hallelujah. I believe peace is the confidence in God's sovereignty and his love. 
It must be deeply rooted in God's love. I know that I'm loved by God. Are you with me? And because I know I'm loved by God, I have this confidence that he is sovereign over my life. It means he decides what happens. Are you with me? My circumstances are not dictated by the things that are happening around me. There can be a famine, but God can be my provider. That's the confidence I have in him. There can be people dying of a plague, but I can still survive and have the virus and still survive over and over because I'm not, I know that he is my healer. Are you with me? I can go through intense battles in my life where people feel that there's no way he's going to recover from this mess, but I can come out stronger because he is the banner over my life. That's the confidence that we have. That God is sovereign over our lives. That in a respect of challenges, that we have a Lord on our side. So peace is the fruit of being confident in God's sovereignty and his love. And he's born of the revelation that regardless of your battles, give me attention, regardless of your battles and your struggles and your pains, and your betrayals and sickness and whatever you have gone through, regardless of all those battles, that the Lord will still remain sovereign over your life. Amen. And that he has loved you with an everlasting love. You find your peace in the confidence of the serenity of God and his love for you. Amen. And as long as you can have that, you can be Job who can lose everything. Whose spouse can stand on his face and say, curse God and die. But you hold on to the hem of his garment, believing that I'm coming out of it. Because Job says in 23.10, once he's done with me, I come out like a pure gold. That the challenges are, the, are there not to destroy me, but they're there to refine me. They're there to empower me. They're there to mature me. I'm not here to be crushed. I may be pressed from all sides, but I'm not here to be crushed. And that's the peace of God. Hallelujah. Where we're not ignorant of the things and we don't close our eyes like the pigeons. Where we don't become super spiritual about everything. We deal with life with peace in our heart. Hallelujah. We deal with challenges with peace in our heart. Hallelujah. We're not dependent on isolation and techniques and coping mechanisms and all of that. We are seeking the peace of God in our heart because if God has called himself to be Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace, we need to understand why would he do that? Hallelujah. I want you to know this. It's a confidence and it's an assurance. And it's, you are not self-assured. You are God-assured. Are you with me? We are not self-assured. We don't have the confidence in our own abilities. We are God-assured. We are God-confident. And because we are God-confident, we know that we are weak and we will go through challenges, we will get sick and we will get angry and we will go through these emotions in our lives. But because we are God-confident, we will know that He will still deliver us. Are you with me? It's amazing that in this world, everybody wants peace, but very few have it. People amongst the believers in the church, some of them are the most miserable people. Even though they know that they, they believe in the God of peace. Hallelujah. And we call the shalom all the time, but still a lot of us are struggling with peace. There's different kinds of peace, and I, I, as I said, that I hope I, I can do the justice to the subject. 
There's different kind of peace that we find in the scripture. We'll stick with the Bible. There is a false peace. Everybody say false peace. False. There's an inner peace. There's a peace with God, and then there's a peace with man. There's four different categories of peace throughout the scripture. Are you with me? Amen. Four. False peace, inner peace, peace with God, and peace with man. Peace with God and peace with man. We learn that shalom, Hebrew word, is used in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we find the word Irene is used for the same. So through other scriptures, there is reference to peace, but it's always relating to peace between people, peace between God, peace within people themselves. And then there's also a pretense of peace, which was not peace, which is the most dangerous, and I will be dealing with it today. Write down these scriptures, go home and study. Genesis chapter 34, verse 21, is a relationship between people, is a peace, people seeking peace with themselves. Genesis chapter 34, verse 21. Then we have 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 12, where there's a peace that is needed in the nation. 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 12. And then we find Psalm 85, verse 8. I'm sorry, I have to rest through this, giving you scriptures. Psalm 85, verse 8. There's a peace between God and men. It, it, all these scriptures speaks of different kinds of peace. The word peace that we read in Jehovah Shalom in Gen Judges 6, it relates to a covenantal peace. Everybody say covenantal peace. Because there was a shedding of the blood in that incident. And I said to you, we, we're going to go through Gideon, Gideon again. We're going to have a series of messages, five to six messages. I'm looking at into it to breaking into a peace peace format for, for you, a meal format for you, amen? So we're going to go through that one chapter very intensely in just coming few weeks. But the Jehovah Shalom in Judges 6 speaks of the covenantal peace. In fact, throughout the scripture, when, whenever God introduces himself as Jehovah, it is a covenant that he established. Amen. Are you with me? Jehovah. We had, last week, we had Jehovah. What was that? Jehovah, all-sufficient God. El Shaddai. Jehovah, El Shaddai. And I tell you, I feel like if we continue to discover these Jehovah names, depression will be just gone. <laughs> because there's, there's a covenant dealing with everything in your life. Jehovah El Shaddai was a covenant established with Abraham, dealing with his insufficiencies. Jehovah Shalom, a covenant established with Gideon, dealing with his fears and giving him peace that he needed. Because Gideon was in hiding. Are you with me? So it's a covenantal name. It means if the covenantal name God, the covenantal name of God is revealed in form of Jehovah, it means that God desires for us to have the revelation of him in that light. It's not just a name God. It becomes a special name. Are you with me? So you might have an understanding of God as a savior or as a healer. But when God comes in the scene and introduces himself as Jehovah Shalom, it means that God is dealing with a specific problem in your life. Amen. Where he sees the weakness and he says, listen, I see that you may have the strength and wisdom and understanding, but you lack this. And because you lack that, I establish a covenant with you in that weakness because you cannot take care of that weakness. I become your strength in that weakness. Are you with me? So God becomes specific whenever he releases, whenever he reveals himself as a covenant-keeping God. And in this case, we find he is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of our peace. Put your hand on your chest and say, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of our peace. Hallelujah. You felt good, eh? Yeah. Woo! 
Now, Gideon called Jehovah Shalom. Angel said to him, peace be to you. And Gideon just grabbed that Shalom and says, you know what? This is Jehovah Shalom. It was the revelation that Gideon had of God. Amen? Amen. In, we, we learned last week in Genesis 17, Abraham, God said to Abraham, I'm El Shaddai. But here, he, Gideon had to call it Jehovah Shalom. Are you with me? Yes. And we will learn this, that how you pursue peace. God has made peace with you, but there's, 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 in, there's you that you have to pursue the peace of God. It doesn't come to you naturally. There's times where God will say, I am Jehovah El Shaddai. But there's times where he will expect you to say, Jehovah Shalom. Where he'll expect you to slaughter the calf and do a sacrifice instantly and expect God to intervene on your behalf. Are you with me? The peace that we speak of in Gideon in this context, you must understand this. Gideon felt abandoned by God. Judges 6 verse 13. Let's go in there just to have a bit of context of this story as we establish some of the foundations on the, on the text of Jehovah Shalom. Judges chapter 6 verse 13. Now Gideon is a depressed man. Read this word and you will see. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if Jehovah is with us, why then all this happened to us? How many of you can identify with that? Amen. Then he says, another question. And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us? Where are his miracles? Saying, did not Jehovah bring us up from Egypt? Again, a question mark. But now, listen to this. Jehovah has forsaken us. Bold statement. Who is he making to this statement? He's making this statement to God himself. He's complaining that you forsake me. You have forsaken my people. You have abandoned us. And listen to this. And deliver, not only you abandoned us, but you literally delivered us into the hands of Midianites, our enemies. Can you see a man? Full of anger and rage. Full of abandonment and misery. Questioning God on the face of God. Where are your miracles? Remember I said to you the, the repression, how it creeps in? Action or in actions of others. <laughs> Action and actions of God. Here... In this case, it's an inaction of God, as if God didn't do enough for them. Many of you have that reasoning. Where was God when I made that stupid mistake? Why well, didn't get any counseling? Why well, didn't get any warning before I step into that mess? Where are your miracles? Miracles that the others speak of, but I'm still praying for it for so many years. Where are those miracles? Where are your mighty deeds? Where are you? You not only abandoned us and forsaken us, you literally taken us and gave us to our enemies. A miserable man, a depressed man, a fearful man, afraid man. Things are happening for others, but where are the things that are supposed to happen for me? Hallelujah. Come on now. You're going quiet, are you? <laughs> and I want to say this to you. In spite of all these things, God did not rebuke Gideon. This is the beauty of the scripture. He called him a mighty warrior as your father had so much compassion 
over this angry child, over this depressed child, over this child who feels so abandoned and rejected and forsaken. And that's why in that revelation when he felt the warmth of God, he realizes, you know what? I'm trying to seek peace in my deliverance, in my healing, in my financial prosperity. Only if I have more money, then there will be peace in my house. Only if I can be healthy, there can be peace in my life. I'm trying to find peace in everything, in my crops, in my business, in my life, in my marriage, in my house. But the peace is not coming from every, any side because I'm looking peace from wrong places. Are you with me? Didn't have to stand in there after complaining to God and calling God names and then realize, man, I, I've been looking peace in the wrong places. My peace is in you. And that's where he called, he called God Jehovah Shalom because God's word in response to this complaints were peace be to you. What were the words? We read, peace be to you. Are you with me? Imagine that. Complaints, 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 and God goes to the root of it. You might have Midianites. You might be the least from the Manasseh tribe and the least in your father's house. You might be a coward. You might be hiding and doing things. And you might be blaming me for all the misery in your life. Peace be still. Amen. Peace be to you. Those were the words of God to Gideon. God didn't say, okay, oh yeah, on, on the Midianites, hey, I'm going to take care of them and you're going to have peace. God says, peace be to you. Hallelujah. Isn't this beautiful? So when enemy want to take down a believer, he snatches their peace away from them. Some of these, these are powerful weapons. The Satan's arsenals consist of such things as fear, worry, doubt, self-pity. When you lose your peace, fear comes in. Then you're double-minded. Then the doubt comes in because now you don't have peace about things. Then you feel self-pity. The root cause is peace. When if you just need peace in your own heart, not even in your houses, in your spouse, in your marriage, with your children, or even at workplace where the life is such a miserable thing, you just need peace in your own heart. Turn to your neighbor and say, my beloved or my, my sister or my brothers, tell, tell them you need peace in your own heart. Your time is flying and I'm not even page four of page 20. <laughs> uh, that's the fact. We just started on page four. Okay. So we have, we have the dependence. We have to build. We have to build our focus. We have to shift our focus and build our confidence in this one thing. That no matter how much you try hard, you cannot find peace in your own abilities. Are you with me? Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22. Bible says, there's no peace, says Jehovah, to the wicked. There's no peace says Jehovah to the wicked. It's a very strong word. But it doesn't mean that you have to be wicked for you to not have peace. It means that there is wickedness around you that, cause, that can cause you to not have peace. Are you with me? So the wickedness, the presence of wickedness and evil can suppress your peace. And this is what we're going to build now. Whenever you don't have peace, you are at war. Let me repeat that. Whenever you don't have peace, you are at war. 
So if you don't have peace in your marriage, you are war. It's either peace or war. If you don't have peace in your workplace, you are at war. The absence of peace means war. Are you with me? The absence of peace means war. Like in the nations, if there's no peace, it means they're always on the alert because now they must safeguard each other, protect each other. They're literally on war. And even if they're not attacking each other, it can be cold war. They call it the cold war. Cold love keep coming back. Wherever you have peace, you have victory. Wherever you have peace, you have victory. So there's certain areas in your life you are at peace with. It means you have victoriously conquered those areas. Are you with me? You might be financially stable and you have peace with your finances. It means you are victorious in that area of your life. You might be struggling in your marriage. It means you haven't conquered that battle as yet. So wherever there is peace, there is victory. But the absence of peace means war. Absence, tell, say it with me, absence of peace means war. And that's where the restlessness comes in your heart when you don't have peace with people, with God. You know, there's, there's restlessness because as if you are, you, you know, people, people have complaints of petty things. It's not that they are confronted with the, you know, the enemies. It's there's a war within them all the time. And that's why they're so defensive all the time. And if somebody has to just give them a look, they feel that that person is the worst enemy that they ever had. Did you see how they looked at me? You see how they treated me? They must be gossiping about me. Meanwhile, those poor fellows that don't even know what's happening as if they were this, you're the center of the world. It's because you are in a war within yourself and everything that is around you feel hostile. Petty things are exemplified. You know, they're made bigger. Small noises become huge because there is a war within you and there's a war because there's no peace. An enemy knows that. Are you with me? Absence of peace means there is wickedness that is choking the life out of you. Because there's a wicked, wherever there is wickedness, there is no peace, according to the word of God we read just now. Hallelujah. Absence of peace, and I want to close with this, my 42 minutes are gone. Absence of peace also means double-mindedness. Hallelujah. Double-mindedness. And this is where enemy comes in so subtle. If he removes peace from your heart, brings doubt, worries, fears, and self-pity. And then, now you're double-minded about everything because you don't have peace. Bible says that in James chapter 1 verse 88. James chapter 1 verse 8. A double-minded man, unstable in all, not few of his ways, all his ways. A double-minded man. James chapter 1 verse 8. So now absence of peace has caused you to be so vulnerable that the peace has been snatched away and now you've become double-minded about everything. Things that you were so peaceful about, when there's no peace, now you're double-minded. Should I be here? Should I not be here? And when you become double-minded, you become unstable. That's how it affects your mental health. Because now you're, there's a battle in your mind about things. Should I, should I not, should I, should I not? There's a war going on. Should I stick with this marriage or should I leave? Because the peace is missing. And when the peace is missing, then you're double-minded about everything. And when you're double-minded, you become unstable and you become a danger to yourself. You make decisions in your instability of mind. You don't think properly. You don't see properly. You don't reason properly because enemy has snatched away your peace. And by doing so, he made you double-minded. And by making you double-minded, he made you unstable, not in part of your ways. Now your whole life is affected by the instability of your mind. That's where the depression comes in because the depressed people are always thinking, yay, no, yay, no. Not this, not, there's always reasoning because there's a battle going on 
and their battle is for peace. And they can't find peace. Are you with me? Yes. Is it helping somebody? Hallelujah. Enemy offers counterfeit peace to keep, keep us in the cycle of double-mindedness. And if I start this, I'll need another 20 minutes to explain it to you. There's a counterfeit peace. Counterfeit peace. And we're gonna, we have examples in, throughout the scriptures about the counterfeit peace. And that becomes a bondage in the life of people. Satan offers spiritual peace. It comes in a form of spirituality, but it's dangerous because it makes you unstable. It's a counterfeit peace. Are you with me? Amen. How many pieces? False peace, inner peace, peace with God and peace with man. I just laid a foundation. And I think to next week we'll start with the counterfeit peace, false peace. Are you with me? Amen. Are you fine with that? Amen. I thought I could just finish this, but it did not happen. But did it help you? Amen. There is a pretense of peace that the enemy uses to keep us unstable. Are you with me? Amen. Instability. When instability comes, then you're instable not only in one area of your life, then your whole life. Bible says in all his ways, not part of his ways, all his ways. When the peace starts to miss out, then things that you had peace with as well, enemy comes, then he comes back with seven strong demons. Then he wants those conquering mountains as well in your life. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Some of us need peace in the house this morning. Amen. I want you to stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shalom. A covenant that God established with his people. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shalom. Thank you, Father. Lord, I bless you. I bless you and honor you for your faithfulness to God. I thank you for your word. The word that brings healing to our bones. The word that brings healing to our minds. The word that makes us stable and brings peace into our chaos. I pray that the peace of God will come upon us. The peace that passes all human understanding will be our portion. It will safeguard and secure our minds and our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray peace, peace, peace of God, that the shackles of bondage be broken in the name of Jesus, that Satan will not have advantage over your mind anymore. In Jesus' mighty name, our peace comes from the one who calls himself Jehovah Shalom. And God, I thank you that you don't come to rebuke and judge, but you come to comfort. Like you say to Gideon on the faces of his complaints and mumbling and anger at you, you said, peace be to you, Gideon. Lord, I pray, peace be to your sons and daughters this morning. Peace in their houses. Peace and long life over them, O oh God. Peace in all that they have in Jesus' mighty name. That you are God who will keep your covenant with us, your people. And you say that you are Jehovah. Shalom. Shalom. And God, I thank you that we are under the banner of Jehovah. Shalom. In Jesus' name. I bless you. I give you glory. I thank you for peace. That comes from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come and give God some praise in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah.